Welcome back. So, PPL Navigation and Flight Planning Lesson 3, Circular Slide Rule, Part 1, Wind Components. I know, that didn't sound very excited when I said that. One of the preconditions that you need to be measured on during the exam under the Wind Components part is the ability to calculate the head and tail wind given runway and wind velocity. Now this is a, a cautionary tale. Um, I have been bitten by this myself. You can be given wind in either degrees true or degrees magnetic. <coughs> and if you don't pay particular attention to the exam question, you can right royally faff it up just like I did. So, cautionary tale. Firstly, take care, as the wind you are given will be in either degrees true or degrees magnetic. Now, it would be very easy if the exam said degrees true or degrees magnetic, but they don't. They will give you clues to work it out. So, understanding that all runway headings are given in degrees magnetic, you will need to convert the wind. You may get an exam question that says the runway heading is degrees something. That should be a warning bell for you to say I need to convert this into degrees true so that all of the rest of the corresponding results are degrees true. Cautionary tail aside, we'll go back to the flight computer and on the wind side of the flight computer is mainly used to calculate how much your aircraft is going to be blown off course by the wind and to help you calculate what course correction to make to compensate for this. Now it is possible to perform the calculation also and these will be covered. So under the triangle of velocities there are three vectors and they can be marked on the disk so that they appear in the same relationship to one another as it would be in flight. And this makes it easy to visualize the situation and check that the vectors have been applied correctly. Do not be afraid on that nasty little pencil and piece of A4 paper that they give you to quickly throw together a quick wind triangle so that you can check and verify your results because when you look at it, it's logical. So don't be afraid to just quickly to wind triangle, <coughs> put your numbers there and check your results. So, on the wind side of the flight computer, it's made up of the following components. The circular rotatable compass rose. Uh, the posh name for that is azimuth. Now that's got indexes marked on it. There's a transparent plastic plotting disc with a little dot in the center, also known as the grommet. And you've got the sliding panel printed with concentric speed arcs and radial drift lines. When using your E6B wind side, we perform these steps. We set the wind direction under the true index. That's at the very, well, should be at the very top when you start. Um, and we mark the wind speed under the grommet. Next we rotate to align the runway heading under the true index and draw a horizontal line at 90 degrees to the middle uh, of the middle to the center line and this is the headwind part. Next we line up the line previously drawn against that radial drift line and read off the cross wind following the circular lines. Now, that sounds all very arty-farty and fairy. On most E6B flight computers, um, you'll find a table for calculating headwinds and crosswinds. And what they've done is they've given sort of variations in, 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 in sort of tens or twenties, which means that you're going to need to interpolate. Now, if you know how to do this, then you've got no problem at all. An interpolation is just roughly working out, and it is rough, wet finger in the air, what half or a third or a quarter of the two 
prominent markings would give you. But if interpolation is not your thing, use those. Set the wind direction under the true index and mark the wind speed under the grommet. Then rotate to align the runway heading under the true index and draw a horizontal line at 90 degrees to the middle. Next, line up the line previously drawn against the radial drift line and read off the crosswind. And that's it. Now, on the back side of the E6B, you'll notice the rotating dial on the metal slider. The metal slider can be reversible. Now, some have uh, some have some uh, calculations. I think the ASAs have have all the, the calculations and oh, what else have they got? Uh, Crosswind corrections, wind component grids, um, off course corrections, and then on the flip side, it'll show you the the the, 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 the those radials, and it'll probably at the very top have um, like this one does, um, course corrections and true corrections for ground speeds. All right, so just make sure you know which which way round it is. Now on my Jeppesen, which is the one that you can see in the photo here. I've got a, a high speed and a low speed card. Uh, now, when I first went out, I, I, I'd got the Jeppesen one to start with, and then someone showed me their their ASA. Um, now, either of them you're allowed to take into the exam room, so it's not a problem. But the ASA just has a, a, a low speed um, arc, which is ideal for for the PPL. Um, the high speed arc is is a lot more for sort of um, uh, high-speed aircraft um, which we won't get to play with for a while so make sure that you've got if you have got a Jepson or one that has high speed and low speed make sure you get the the, the, the right way around and it's just easier for calculations now um, if we are going to run through uh, we're going to run through this example here, the true airspeed, the true course, and the wind direction and speed. All right, so first thing you need to do, as you can see, you've got the center line, you've got the little grommet, uh, which is where that little hundred is. Um, and I generally set up just this way. So I put the little grommet over the 100, just for calculation, for, for no other reason. Um, and <coughs> so, we rotate the dial to place the wind direction under the true index. So we put 290 underneath that true index uh, triangle. Step one, tick, done. Uh, then we place a small pencil mark on the plastic surface to identify the wind velocity. And we put it at 22, so it's, it's we've worked from 100 and we've got it circled down at 122. Cool, number two's done. Now you'll notice on the bold sensor line, some numbers from about 30 at the bottom um, all the way up to, to, to 260. Um, you'll also notice a grid which marks the increments of two units. Now again, these can be different depending on the, um, uh, the E6B that you use. So place the small hole in the center of the plastic directly over the 100 and that just makes calculations above and below that just so much easier. The 100 has no meaning other than it's just easy to count. And then if you count the units upwards and place a mark on the plastic that corresponds to the wind speed, uh, which in this particular example is 22 knots, and you're placing the mark at 122. Right? That bit's easy. Now we're going to rotate the dial to place the true course now under the true index. Now we're doing that because we've marked the wind and airspeed, and that's now identified in as the dot. So now we're going to put that, that sort of correction in. So we rotate the dial to place the true course under the true index. And now we slide the metal slider so that the pencil mark that we've made lines up with the true airspeed. You see what we're doing here? Good. Um, so now all we need to do is read the ground speed corrected for wind at the centre line. 
and in this example the ground speed as you can see is 141 yes it's 140 and the smallest increment 141 now to find the wind correction angle by counting the units between the pencil mark and the center line um, so that's that little red dot to the bottom left uh, just around about sort of like the 125 mark right? so that's the correction so we find the correction angle by counting the units between the pencil mark and the center line and in this example you should get about six degrees if your pencil mark falls to the left of the center line take away and if it falls to the right add so left minus right add and as long as you can remember that you'll never ever go wrong now you should arrive at the ground speed of 141 with a true heading of 64 degrees and it really is just that simple practice it and keep practicing it it doesn't take a lot to remember the process all you need to do is just keep going round and round and round and the more you do it the better you get it becomes muscle memory after a while okay so Keep practicing, watch the video a few times, and, and just keep working through that example. Um, but also, uh, check that um, wind component grid as well, and see if interpolation is for you. It's not for me, um, but we all learn in different ways. So just keep banging away at it until you find the right one for you, but keep redoing this video. You will have to do one or two questions on the, on the exam to do with this. Best of luck, and I'll see you in Lesson 3, Part 2.